Hello, in this video we're going to talk about Parkinson's disease, um, which is a neurodegenerative dis disease. About 0.3% of the population over the age of 40 um, has this um, disease. It's about 7.5 million people worldwide. So let's look at the firstly the signs and symptoms of Parkinson's. And here I'm drawing a patient um, who shows, um, who presents with tremors, shaking. And he presents like this due to a condition um, called Parkinson's disease that affects the brain. The cardinal features of Parkinson's disease, there are four. These include tremors, rigidity, bradykinesia, postural instability. There are other features which affect the craniofacial areas, which include hypomimia, which is basically decrease in facial expression, dysphagia, hypophonia, reduction in uh, basically the tone of the voice, volume. Vis uh, uh, other features include visual problems such as blurred vision and eyelid opening apraxia. Um, other features also include gait. You can have shuffling, festinations and freezing. So all these signs and symptoms are a result of um, uh, problems that occur within the brain, particularly in an area of the brain known as the basal ganglia. So let's just quickly revise uh, some important anatomical structures of the, of the brain. So here we have the fornix, which is an important part of the limbic system. We have the hippocampus, which is for memory, the amygdala for emotions. But we will mainly concentrate on this yellow uh, structure here, which is known as the basal ganglia or the basal nucleus. Medially to the basal ganglia is the thalamus, which essentially is a connection between the cortex and the brainstem spinal cord. So again, Parkinson's disease is a result of problems that occur within the basal ganglia or the basal nucleus because this area is responsible for um, muscle tone as well as the ease of um, movement. So to, it, it helps in a smooth movement and learned movement patterns. So let's just take a cross section, a coronal section of the brain here and look at the basal ganglia in a bit more details and its components. So here we're looking at the section of the brain. Here in green is the thalamus, just to orientate where we are. All these structures in yellow here, they are part of the basal ganglia. So the basal ganglia is made up of the caudate nucleus, caudate putamen, putamen, the globus pallidus, of which we have an external and internal part. We also, is made up of the nucleus accumbens, which I have not drawn here. Um, and we have also have the subthalamic, subthalamic nucleus and the substantia nigra, which is, consists of two parts. And just to complete this image, we, all, we have the, amyg, um, the amygdala here as well as the hippocampus. So we will mainly focus again on the basal ganglia, which is disrupted in Parkinson's disease. So what does the basal ganglia do? So let's just have a quick general overview of what it does. So here again we have the brain and this yellow structure is a basal ganglia. Essentially what happens is um, the cortex when it, wants to in, when, it, when it wants to initiate a movement it will send signals first to the basal ganglia and the basal ganglia will send signals back to the cortex particularly the motor cortex and then when the signals are sent back to the motor cortex, the motor cortex can then, you know, initiate these signals, uh, send the signals down the spinal cord, um, and then, you know, out through the ventral horn of the spinal cord to that skeletal muscle to, you know, initiate um, a smooth, controlled movement. Okay, now let's uh, look at that in a bit more detail. So again, the cerebral cortex um, is important. In, it wants to initiate a voluntary movement, it will, it will first send signals to the basal ganglia. And the basal ganglia will help in the subconscious control of subskeletal muscle tone, as well as the coordination of learned movement patterns. This information will then be sent back to the cerebral cortex through a loop. It will be sent to the thalamus first, and then the thalamus will send this info to the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex will then um, send the movement signals, the smooth controlled movement signals down the spinal cord to the skeletal muscle and thus we have a normal movement pattern. 
two important parts in this diagram. The input from the cerebral cortex to the basal ganglia and the output from the basal ganglia to the thalamus back to the cortex. In Parkinson's disease, the output, number two, there's a problem in the output and thus we do not have a normal controlled movement pattern. It is not smooth. So now let us go back to the big diagram and learn uh, about the interconnection that occur within the basal ganglia and how and the disruption that occurs and how this results in Parkinson's disease. So in this diagram, um, we're going to look at all the components of the basal ganglia. So to start, the caudate nucleus and caudate putamen is also known as the caudate striatum. So here, the rectangular structure I'm drawing is the caudate striatum. This is the cortex. And all these other structures here are part of the basal ganglia. We have the substantia nigra pars compacta, the globus pallidus interna, the substantia nigra pars reticula, the globus pallidus externa, the subthalamic nucleus, and the thalamus. Now I'm going to start drawing the interconnections that occur within this region. But firstly, I want, to, I want you to learn three main points. The input from the cortex to the basal ganglia is uh, to the striatum, to the caudate striatum first. So the input is, is to the caudate striatum. The output from the basal ganglia occurs in the globus pallidus interna. That's the point two. So the globus pallidus interna is the output from the basal ganglia to the thalamus. And then the thalamus will then send this information to the cortex, back to the cortex in that loop. And this is point three. The cortex will then send this information to the skeletal muscle down the spinal cord to, to, you know, to cause a smooth movement pattern, coordinated movement pattern. So those are the three main points, the input to the basal ganglia, the output from the basal ganglia, and then the output from the, from the cortex again to the muscle. Now within the basal ganglia, there's a lot of interconnections happening between the glutaminergic neurons, which are the excitatory neurons, as well as the GABAergic neurons, which are your inhibitory neurons. But the most important thing in, uh, in this diagram are, is within the substantia nigra pars compacta, because here we have dopaminergic neurons that arise. And these dopaminergic neurons, they release dopamine in to the caudate striatum. So dopamine can bind onto two types of receptor, D1, dopamine 1, or dopamine 2. And depending on which receptor it binds to, it, it is either excitatory or inhibitory. So if dopamine binds onto D1 receptor, it is excitatory. If, so it will stimulate that neuron. If dopamine binds onto D, D2 receptors, dopamine will inhibit that neuron. So if we were to follow it step by step, uh, the dopaminergic neurons releases dopamine. Dopamine binds onto the D1 receptor, which is excitatory. So it will stimulate the GABAergic neuron here, and it will directly inhibit this GABAergic neuron, allowing the thalamus to send signals to the cortex. So thus the cortex can um, you know, um, send signals to the skeletal muscle for a controlled movement pattern. So that is what occurs normally, but unfortunately in Parkinson's disease, there is, there's not much dopamine. The dopaminergic neurons die. So in Parkinson's disease, you have a reduced uh, dopamine in the substantia nigra. And the pathogenesis probably involves apoptosis or necrosis of dopaminergic neurons. And it is, it is a result of the death of these neurons can be due to uh, protein misfolding, aggreg aggregation and toxicity. It can be due to defective proteolysis. It can be due to mitochondrial dysfunction or oxidative stress. These are all theories. Regardless of the cause, the result is that we have reduced dopamine in, the, in this area, in the basal ganglia. Okay, now let's go back to the diagram and look at what happens if we have reduced dopamine. 
If we have reduced dopamine, dopamine does not bind onto the D2 receptor, which normally inhibits this GABAergic neuron. Thus, the GABAergic neuron here is now overactive and secretes GABA, which inhibits the second GABAergic neuron. Because this GABAergic neuron is now inhibited, it cannot inhibit the glutaminergic neuron in the subthalamic nucleus. And so the subthalamic nucleus glutaminergic neuron will secrete glutamate, which will stimulate this GABAergic neuron in the globus pallidus interna. Similarly, because we have no dopamine, the dopamine does not bind onto the D1 receptor. And so the GABAergic neuron that normally inhibits uh, the globus pallidus interna neuron is not stimulated. And as a result, we have an uh, overactive um, GABAergic neuron from the globus pallidus interna to the thalamus. So we have excessive inhibitory input to the thalamus. Thalamus inhibition causes suppression um, of the thalamocorticospinal um, pathway. And because of this, um, the signals that the basal ganglia should have sent back to the cortex doesn't, doesn't really happen. And so as a result, when, the, when you want to initiate a movement, it's not smooth, coordinated, controlled. And, re and thus, you result in, it, thus it results in the clinical manifestations of Parkinson's disease. I hope that all made sense. Now let's look at the pathology of Parkinson's disease. So let's zoom into the substantia nigra area here, which is, which, can be, which is basically located on the midbrain. Here's a cross-section of the midbrain. And let's compare Parkinson's disease um, uh, substantia nigra to the one of a normal patient. What we see in Parkinson's disease is we see demyelination, neuronal loss, and gliosis within the substantia nigra. Another pathological hallmarks is uh, the presence of Lewy bodies within the soma of the neuron. So here we have the soma of the neuron, and this blue structure here are Lewy bodies. And Lewy bodies are round, eosinophilic, intracytoplasmic occlusions in the nucleus, uh, in the nuclei of the neuron. Um, the Lewy bodies are made up of mainly um, alpha synuclein proteins, ubiquinin, as well as there's other proteins, but mainly alpha synuclein. Now let's talk about the risk factors as well as the protective factors of Parkinson's disease. So the risk factors of Parkinson's disease um, include fa um, family risk factors. There are genetic risk factors which include GBA, CNCA, um, LERC2, PARC2, and PINK1, as well as there's shown that pesticides can cause Parkinson's disease. Protective factors include smoking, coffee, vigorous exercising, as well as the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So that concludes this video on Parkinson's disease. We looked at the signs and symptoms. We looked at the, some neuroanatomy of the basal ganglia. We looked at the function of the basal ganglia, as well as what occurs in Parkinson's disease. And then we looked at the, the pathophys, as well as the pathology, and the risk factors and protective factors. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video.